I believe this four-way splitting wedge is one of the best modifications you can make to any hydraulic homeowner log splitter and I'm going to show you how to make it yourself. First thing I'm doing is using a chop saw to cut a curve through a 5 8 inch thick metal plate only halfway through to make it easier to bend. Now before I show you how we bent this, I must say the way we did this was incredibly stupid and dangerous. But nonetheless, it was a good learning lesson of how not to do this and luckily nobody was seriously hurt. So we needed a way to bend this metal plate without the splitting wedge filling the kerf I just cut with the chop saw. We had this bolt laying around which seemed like a good option but we should have used something square to create more stability when pressing down with the splitter as you can see what happened. Fortunately, no ribs were broken. Now that both pieces are bent, you can see the desired shape of what we're trying to make is starting to take form. So next, we're going to be cutting a block for the back of the splitting wedge, also out of 5 8 inch thick metal. Uh, in this case, we're using a propane torch, however, you could probably do this with a chop saw as well, although you're going to blow through a few blades if you do. The torch is much more effective for this. Right now, we're cutting a hole to put a bolt in. This will hold it tight to the original splitting head. You could do this with a drill, but same thing, you'd probably go through multiple bits drilling through this thick of metal. Next thing we're doing is closing the kerf that I cut with the chop saw through both sides now that they're bent. We're going to be using 7018 rods for this, which are the same rods we're using for the entire build. Next step is to just put a tack in either side of this plate in the back to make sure that everything is where we want it to be. While Dad was welding up the back of that four-way, I decided to sharpen the splitting edge on this log splitter after we dulled it from bending the metal in the beginning. This splitter is actually neither of ours, and we were just building this four-way as a gift for my father-in-law and a fun project to take on together. You couldn't quite shave with it, but it'll split a lot better now. Okay, so what we're doing here is using more 7018 rods to tie together the tip of this splitting wedge. Um, we're welding anywhere from 125 to 160 amps, depending on how much penetration we need. Um, now we're using that torch to cut off the back wings of the, the excess on the splitter. Like I said, that's 5 8 inch thick, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. It's just what we had laying around. Damn, there's no way you're going to be able to edit that to make it look now the reason dad said it's not going to be pretty is because we're using a number three tip for that which really you should use a number one here we've got a number one back on the torch uh, oh you're going to get some hate on your channel for welding and cutting down by the way thank you ah, good now we're using that angle behind it this is kind of a creative solution that we are cutting an edge on this wing. Uh, that's one inch thick steel that we're cutting. Um, we're just trying to taper it down with the torch because that'd be a lot to grind with just a grinding wheel. Um, knocking off the slag here, putting it into a vise, and we're gonna clean it up with a grinder like so. Now that the wings are nice and sharp, we're going to weld them onto the original body. As you can see, we uh, did quite a few passes to get them welded on there. One thing that I forgot to mention is that you can see the little pieces of metal, um, metal stock in the inside there. That's basically just to allow the splitter to have its load not on the tip of the, the two-way splitter. The, the weight load is behind it, sitting more on the shoulder, so that way it doesn't dull the tip of the two-way when you're splitting with the four-way. Um, that's an important thing to consider if you're making this yourself. Um, the other thing I forgot to mention is that we designed this four-way so that no matter which side the hydraulic cylinder is on, whether it's all the way extended or all the way inside, it doesn't butt up against the any parts of the splitter so it won't dull the four-way it won't beat up your splitter um, another important thing to consider um, you can also see those red wings to push off the logs in the back um, those we trim down about a quarter of an inch to get this four-way to split um, I don't think that'll in fact affect their uh, structural integrity um, here you can say we're, we're we're splitting up some um, ugly looking maple there it had some carpenter ants in it here's some ash 
uh, another hardwood and uh, this 34 ton gravely has no trouble splitting this uh, with a four-way um, so the, the other thing is that I would recommend using a four-way like this on a log splitter no less than 20 tons of hydraulic force because if you only have a 10 ton hydraulic splitter it might have a little trouble pushing this through firewood um, this is a 34 ton so um, no trouble here it split ash and maple hickory we tried with it no problem and uh, it's more than twice as fast as the original splitting head. Last step here is to just touch it up with some spray paint. Um, it's not a necessary step, but because this is a Christmas gift, we want it to look pretty. Um, and here it is, the final product. Uh, it's not the prettiest looking four-way, but it might be the heaviest. You're not going to find them like this at the grocery store.